thanks so much, my best friend. The day has come. It's wedding day, baby. I can't believe it's finally here. I feel like it was just yesterday I found you in the beer line. My red and white angel. You are so beautiful and you have only grown more beautiful. I can't imagine my life without you and I can't wait to grow old with you. I have kids with you, kiss you goodnight every night before bed and have you as my rock forever. I know my dad and you never got to meet each other formally, but I know he loves you and looks after you just like he does for me. He is going to be there today and welcome you into the Anderson family with open arms. I want you to do me a favor right now. Look in the mirror, what do you see? Yes, you see you in a wedding dress, but what else? You see the most beautiful woman in the world, the nicest, most kind-hearted woman in the world. I cannot wait to marry you, and I am waiting at the end of the aisle for you. I love you, Chris.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to us today. Then, with Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father through Christ our Lord for this couple, his servants, that he lovingly accept them, and bless them, and make them always one. pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness uphold what you have established for the increase of the human race, so that the union you have created may be kept safe by your assistance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, and I now invite the first reader to come forward. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is good for the man to be alone. It's not good for the man to be alone, excuse me. I will make a suitable partner. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals, various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, all the wild animals, but none proved to be suitable for the partner of the man, for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs, closed it up in place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, this one at last is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. This one, for out, for out of her man, this one has been taken. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife. And the two of them become one body. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong for a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests, it is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury, it does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoice with truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Chris and Nora, congratulations on your wedding day. It is such a joy to be here with many friends and family to celebrate with you and pray with you as you take this next and beautiful sacramental step in your life. And it's awesome that we're actually celebrating this so close to Thanksgiving. Uh, the two are not too far, uh, a holiday that's predominantly about giving thanks and family and a wedding. And we're here to give thanks to God for your relationship and your love today and to pray for you, to support you, and to remind you that you're part of the family here at St. Agnes Church, but also you have such wonderful family that have come to support you here as well. I hear that Thanksgiving dinner actually last night was huge. It was, that's probably like the most epic uh, rehearsal dinner I think I've ever heard of is, you know, a wedding rehearsal dinner and Thanksgiving combined, but it's wonderful. The readings you picked today are actually wonderful as well. Um, marriage is an interesting sacrament because it's the one that actually predates Jesus. It's the one that um, actually comes before Jesus. It's a natural relationship that comes from the beginning of the scriptures. It comes from Judaism and that Jesus takes up and makes something all of his own. And it's something really about um, love, natural love that's purified, lifted up, and, and fired really in the love of God to become something more. And that's why I think it's also important that in addition to the first and the gospel reading that you guys picked, the second reading is all about love. And that's a beautiful and wonderful thing. But one of the things that I've often been sort of challenged about is this. Jesus 
commands us to love, which I don't know about you, but that strikes me, at least on the face of it, as kind of odd. God commands us to love. How, how can you command someone to love? It's kind of like commanding someone to like strawberry ice cream or to enjoy pickles. Um, it seems just like something that you can't do, right? Like, what, what's the deal? So, but it's different because Jesus commands us to love, really and truly. And I think what it's highlighting is the love that God wants for you, the love that God has for us, is something different than what we oftentimes, you know, speak of in this world. And a lot of times I think it's important to draw this distinction because when people, most people today talk about love, they talk about something as if it's something that they, it's a feeling they experience, and it it comes in and out kind of like the weather, in and out like fog. Um, You can be in love in one moment, and then in the next moment something happens and the fog lifts or the sun comes out and the the situation is different, and the love is gone. It's gone. And I don't think that's what Jesus has in mind. I don't think that's what God has in mind for your marriage. I don't think that's what God wants for your marriage. And I don't think that's ultimately the love that we're called to have as Christians. It's something more sturdy, more enduring. As we hear about in our gospel today, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. It's eternal. The love of God is eternal. And there's a story I really like that kind of highlights the difference between sort of the, the, the transitory love of God and the love of God that you're called to emulate and the gift of love that you're called to receive in this sacrament today. And it's this. Um, it's a story that I'm actually stealing from a rabbi, uh, Rabbi Adam Tversky. Uh, he's a, a popular rabbi in New York, and he actually has a series of YouTube videos, um, one of which this is a story that he tells. And it's a story about a rabbi. So it's a rabbi telling a story about a rabbi. This is like the setup of a bad joke, a priest telling a story about a rabbi, telling a story about a rabbi. But go with me. We'll get there. Um, So the rabbi is walking along the shore of the sea one day. And he comes upon a fisherman in a charcoal fire early in the morning. And the fisherman is cooking a fish on the charcoal fire. And he comes up to the fisherman and says, hey, how's it going today? And the fisherman says, it's gone great. Day's off to a great start. I caught a fish. And he said, oh, that's a good start to a good day. And he says, yeah, I love fish. And the rabbi looks at him and says, you love fish? That's why you took it out of the sea and are roasting it, are going to eat it like you love the fish? And his point is, no, you love the fish because the fish satisfies your needs. It does something for you. It gives you something. You know, it's useful to you. And he says, that's not real love. And then the rabbi in the video goes on, uh, Rabbi Tversky goes on to say, so much of what passes for love in our world today, that transient kind, is fish love. It's us saying things like, I love you because you give me what I want when I want it. And he says, actually, that's not really true of authentic love. The real authentic love is always looking at the other person. What might I give to you? And that's the love that we're called to experience in marriage and in the sacraments. A love that's other-centered. My theological and philosophical homeboy, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines love as to will the good of the other for the other's benefit. To choose the other person's good, the real good of that other person, always for it. So it's always seeking the other person and what really will benefit them and going out of their way to provide for them. And that's ultimately the love of God that we see on the cross. God comes to meet us. He does everything that he can to bring out our good. And that's the love that God wants you to have for each other, to be perfected in. Because ultimately what this beautiful sacrament of marriage is about is exactly what you chose in those readings. You two complete each other. You complete each other in a new and vivid way. And it's a beautiful thing, but that's going to take moments of sacrifice and moments of difficulty in every marriage. I'm sure every married person in here um, will tell you that marriage comes with great joys, absolutely, but also struggles. And it's being fired in that self-sacrificial love of God, that love that is constantly and joyfully finding joy in the satisfaction of the other that ultimately will bring about the success, and not just the success, but the thriving of your relationship. So give your love daily to the love of God. That's the best advice I can give you. Give your love daily to the love of God and allow him to perfect it. 
Allow him to make it something more vivid than it is on its own. Allow him to take, no offense, the, the ordinary lump of coal, if you will, that is our human love, and make it into a diamond, something that is forever, something that's permanent, something that's beautiful. And if you do that, then you will find happiness as a married couple. You will find courage to s survive and weather any storms that may come your way. But then you will also find joy because even your better moments will become better in the light of eternity. So if you're ready to enter into this beautiful sacrament, I invite you please to stand and meet me front and center and we will exchange vows. You have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Christopher and Nora, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and to honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, Join now your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. Repeat after me. First, Chris. I, Christopher, take you, Nora, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. I, Nora, take you, Christopher, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you. To love you. And to honor you. All the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Good to go. Christopher, receive this ring. Christopher, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Please stand. Dear brothers and sisters, as we call to mind the special gift of grace and charity by which God has been pleased to crown and consecrate the love of our sister Nora and our brother Chris, let us commend them to the Lord. Our response is, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. That these faithful Christians, Nora and Chris, newly joined in holy matrimony, may always enjoy health and well-being, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That he will bless their covenant as he chose to sanctify marriage at Cana in Galilee, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may be granted perfect and fruitful love, peace and strength, and that they may bear faithful witness to the name of Christian, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Christian people may grow in virtue day by day, and that all who are burdened by any need may receive the help of grace from above. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That the grace of the sacrament will be renewed by the Holy Spirit in all persons here present, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Graciously pour out upon this husband and wife, O Lord, the spirit of your love, to make them one heart and one soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined, and no harm come to those you have filled with your blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God too. Wherever you die, I shall die. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings made on the occasion of the sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as in your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth and baptism gives increase to the church through Christ our Lord. Through him, with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. 
For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Strengthen, we pray, in the grace of marriage, Christopher and Nora, whom you have brought happily to their wedding day, that under your protection they may be always faithful in their lives in the covenant they have sealed in your presence. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Please kneel. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessings of his grace and make them of one heart in love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, those he is joined by a holy covenant. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ in his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man and the companionship that they had at the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour out your love into their hearts that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Nora and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband Chris entrust his whole heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and joining as his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. You guys can stand. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Please kneel or be seated. At this point, we enter into what is for us as Catholics the most intimate moment of the Mass, the reception of Holy Communion. And as Catholics, we believe that the Eucharist, the sacrament of Holy Communion, is actually the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And receiving that sacrament is actually a symbolic act that means an ascent to the faith, accepting everything from the Pope on down. 
Because of that, we ask that only Catholics who have been to confession in recent memory and aren't conscious of any uh, grave sin present themselves for communion at this time. If you're with us today and you're not Catholic, we're happy that you're here to pray and support, for, uh, and pray and support our couple. Um, but we would ask that if you would like to come forward for a blessing, you can also do that at this time and indicate that by placing your hands like this. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please stand. By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make of one heart and love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished with the one bread and one chalice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. And may you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. It is my pleasure to introduce you to the happy couple, newly married, and you may kiss the bride. <laughs>
just guess the path. It's hard to see, it's hard to trust. Songs in the signs, putting back the pieces of paradise. Yeah, climbing high, falling low, hanging on, letting go. Sometimes it takes a crooked road to figure out. I wish I knew. Lieutenant and Mrs. Christopher Anderson. Come on, let's hear it.
Here we are in the capital room, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have our very first dance as husband and wife. Let's hear it one more time for a bride and groom. Everybody, make some noise. Yes! <laughs> Keeper of the stars, Tracy Bird. It was no accident. Me finding you. Someone had a hand in it. Long before we ever knew. Now I just can't believe you're in my Heaven smiling down on me as I look at you tonight. I tip my hand to the keeper of the stars. He sure knew what he was doing. He joined these two hearts. I hold everything when I hold you in my arms. I've got all I'll ever need. Thanks to the key. We're going to invite our bridal party to dance with our bride and groom. Please join our bride and groom on the dance floor. Oh, how you shine. It takes my breath away just to look into your eyes. I know I don't. Feel free to join everybody in the dance floor if you like to dance, ladies and gentlemen. Our parents, maybe. Family and friends. We got loads of room for you. To show my gratitude. So I tip my Welcome to all of you. I was asked by Nora to give the blessing. Let's take a moment, and bow your heads, each in his own words and each in his own way. Let us pray. Hear, O oh Lord, as we gather together to witness this union of this man this woman. Please bless their, this marriage and enrich their lives with the help of each other and those of us who are their family and friends. Please nourish their union as this food nourishes our lives. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm not done. <laughs> yeah. you, you notice that I used a card and not one of those emails? <laughs> well, I come from the far wild west, out in the War Washington Territory. And in that... Uh, I mean, I, I hunt and fish for a living. Uh, and I wanted to wear some of my furs. <laughs> be, 
and buckskins and um, other paraphernalia, but my wife wouldn't let me. I got here and I see all of these people wearing furs, and I, I thought, I should have been allowed to bring mine. Anyway, uh, given that, I, I had, I always hunt with a muzzle loader and, and all those other friend angle things. And uh, I did give one exception to a modern device. It was an earpiece that uh, was a microphone. I used it in hunting so I could hear all the animals out in the wilderness. Anyway, I put it in my ear just before Dennis walked Nora down the aisle. And they were coming down just a, as pretty as a father and a daughter could. And then Nora took out from underneath her flowers something and she handed it to her father. And I thought, what is that? And Nora, I heard her say to her father, it's your credit card. <laughs> it was at that point that Chris stumbled a little bit <laughs> and said, no, Nora, you keep it. <laughs> You're just getting started in life, and you might need a little money. And she said, no, Dad, no more. And besides that, it's maxed out. <laughs> God bless you, too. Thank you. Good boy. <laughs> is that like, okay? Where is he going with that? <laughs> you <Thank> never you. <laughs> know. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint, but I put this on my cell phone, this speech. <laughs> what a day, huh? Hey, everyone. My name is Andrew, and I'm Chris's best man. First, I'd like to say what an amazing wedding. You guys did such a good job making this the perfect day. Everything has gone absolutely perfect. It's kind of like you've been planning this your whole life. <laughs> um, could Mr. and Mrs. O'Neill stand up real quick? I would love to say thank you to these two. Thank you so much for hosting Thanksgiving and having everyone at your house. That, uh, that had to have been a lot to tackle at once. So thank you so much, I appreciate it. All right, so Chris and I have been best buddies for a long time now. And I'm so happy to celebrate with him as he marries his second true love after me. <laughs> so we met through wrestling in middle school and we were on the uh, same City League baseball team. We immediately hit it off. Uh, we are both two co uh, competitive people, a little hard-headed, a little crazy, and like to have fun together. <laughs> so we quickly became best buds, raised a lot of hell together, and you're like a brother to me, you're family. He's like, I still laugh at those days where you would come over to the house just to hang out, and then my family would just give you a hammer and some tools and say, get to work. <laughs> No joke, he came over like five times in a row to do house projects with us. <laughs> so Chris and I are the kind of people that have fun doing everything. We would rage, we would work out, we'd beat each other up at wrestling practice, or just being ourselves. We've watched Safe Haven probably 20 times together, and I'm not ashamed at all. <laughs> it's a great chick flick. <laughs> Chris is one of the most genuine guys I've ever met in my life. He's always had such a, he's been such a good friend to me. He's always there, and he's always been there when I needed him. I spent a lot of time in the hospital, and he was always there 
and that means a lot to me that you were there for me always. <clears throat> One time I went to visit Chris at school at St. A's, which I would often do for studying. Uh, <laughs> and I go there. One time, I don't know where he goes. I met this chick. You're not going to believe this. <laughs> he went on this vacation, and he meets Nora. And he comes back. He's like, her name's Nora, and I'm going to marry her one day. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> sure. Meet this girl on a strange vacation, and you're going to marry her, huh? But he was serious. There was something about her. He could, he could sense it. He knew it. Anyways, I meet her for the first time a month or so later and completely changed my mind. It made perfect sense to me because she was absolutely beautiful and just an amazing person all around. The time I've spent with them together, we've had such a good time, always having a blast. We're always uh, the three peas in a pod, that's for sure. <laughs> You're stuck with me forever, Nora. <laughs> so let's party and have a blast tonight, everybody. If you could hold up your glass. And toast to my best buddy, marrying the girl of his dreams. Cheers. Hi, everyone. Welcome. For those of you who don't know us, I'm Katie. I'm Megan. And we are the sisters of the most beautiful bride. We wanted to start by congratulating Nora and Chris and thanking you all for making your way here to be part of their journey. We also wanted to thank our parents for making today possible and bringing all of Nora's dreams to come to, to, to life. But most of all, we wanted to thank you for, for providing the wine for the process. <laughs> Nora, every detail you've put into this wedding has turned out so perfectly. It's been almost a year of her planning and replanning, and you should be so proud of all your hard work. Chris, you got your pants on and you showed up. <laughs> Over the last 23 years, Nora has meant the world to us. We have been through some of our hardest times of our lives together, through 12 moves, 8 schools, and 2 deployments, through all of our emotional and mental breakdowns, and even a couple of broken elbows, I can honestly say we would not be half the people we are today if we didn't have a big sister like Nora to look up to. I am so proud of the life she has chosen for herself, and especially the man she's chosen to live it with. There have been so many Chads, Brads, and Thads who came into Nora's life. If you don't know what that means, ask a millennial. And so when Nora came home from spring break, she was like, I met this kid. And I was like, mm -hmm, okay, here we go again. All right. So I met him. And Chris, the second you started to do the chicken noodle soup dance, I knew you were okay. Yes! I'll never forget the day Nora first told me about Chris. She had just gotten back from spring break in the Bahamas. Let's hear it. And we were getting ready to meet our family for a trip in Miami. It's such a rough life that Nora lives. She started with a story with, so I was in the beer line and this guy came up behind me and was starting to make fun of me. And for those of y'all who know me, I instantly got overprotective. But as I looked up and I saw the smile on her face, it was a small smile I know all too well because it's one that I often see on my parents' face. It was a smile of love. And I knew in that moment, Nora's life would never be the same. Nora has been our best friend since before we even knew what a best friend was. We have had some battles that only sisters can come back from. She became the person who was always the first to dry our tears and pour our glasses of wine to make everything better. We laugh too hard, but never too often, and we usually make a fool of ourselves in the process. We've defended one another and helped each other get away with many things in our rebellious teenage years. Sorry, Mom and Dad. <laughs> and we confide in each other without giving it a second thought. Growing up, we've shared some of the best memories together. Nora has always been one of my biggest role models. Whether she was borrowing money from the Walsh's cash register to play Man, I Feel Like a Woman on the jukebox, <laughs> directing one of the o famous O'Neill family Christmas plays, yeah. or strutting her stuff down the stage as she won Miss Leavenworth pageant, she always, found her way, her, she always found a way to make herself the center of attention, but she's always someone that I wanted to be. Kate and I always looked up to Nora, and we tried to follow in her footsteps. We did this by first shopping out of her closet to dress just like her, 
and then by actually using her real identity to get into bars. <laughs> I'll never forget the sheer panic on my parents' face when Chris called just a few short months after they started dating and said, so I have to ask you guys a question. Yep, you all thought the same thing they did, but it was not in fact a propose, but he just wanted to take her skydiving. Chris, today Megan and I give you not only our sister, but our best friend. I'm so thankful you came into my sister's life and brought out the crazy, funny, goofy side of her. You better take care of her because she's our world. We didn't know Chris when he was little, so we had to look to Amelia and Lydia for the funniest, embarrassing stories. But what I can tell you is he is beyond perfect for my sister. I'm so glad the two of you found each other because you both fit so perfectly into each other's life, and I thank you for making her the happiest woman alive. Today marks the beginning of a new chapter. You will be officially be writing a new story and creating new family. Nora has become an army wife from an army brat. Hashtag Tricare for life. I can't wait. I can't wait to watch your new journey unfold. But don't worry, because wherever you are, I will always save the chocolate side of the black and white cookie for you. And our sleepovers will continue, even if it means having to sleep in a basket at the end of your bed again. Yeah. Nora has always set an example for me to follow. Over the years, she has shown me how to love and how to care. Today, she shows me how to find a best friend, a partner, and a soulmate all in one person. I hope that one day I can be just as lucky as the two of you guys are today. You'll forever be our big sister, our best friend, and our partner in crime. Kate and I promised one another we'd be like pretty sober in order to give this speech, so we have a lot of catching up to do. So we're going to wrap it up with a toast. Here's to the bride and groom. Make tomorrow better than today, and make the next day better than tomorrow, so that decades from today, you won't have to settle for remembering the happiest day of your life because you'll be too busy living it. You two deserve nothing but love and happiness, so tonight we raise our glass not to the happiest day of your life, but of the first and many to come. Cheers. Oh, you've heard the song before, huh? When I get old in my head many years from now will you still be sending me a valentine a birthday greetings bottle of wine if i'm it out till quarter to three would you lock the door will you still need me will you still feed me wow i'm 64 My sunshine, my only sunshine, you make me happy in skies of gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. So please don't take my sunshine away. The other night, dear, as I lay sleeping, I dreamt I held you in my arms. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't say 
I like everybody to sing. Come on, everybody join in. You are my. You make me. You never know. Never know, dear, how much I love you. So please don't take my sunshine away. And the last line. So please don't take my sunshine away. You keep on walking till you find the window If it's cold outside Show the world the warmth of your smile But more than anything More than anything My wish for you Is that this life becomes All that you want it to Your dreams stay big Your worries stay small This is 
is your song It may be quite simple but Now that it's done I hope you don't mind I hope you don't mind That I put down in words How wonderful life is Now you're in the world